Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, a couple of months ago, um, a fellow in New Zealand sent me these two Hamlet gouges as a thank you for putting the videos on this channel for, for free, um, which is very nice of him. Um, now I'm going to show you uh, what happens to them next. Right, so these gouges come from Henry Taylor, uh, kind of blackened end. I'm not quite sure what all that's to do with. Um, but the first thing I do is to make the end into a point and the reason for that is so when I drive it into a handle um, I don't have to glue it in um, the, the the point at the end will dig into the wood uh, into the wood in the handle and just stop the tool spinning the first thing to do is to get a triangular end onto the piece and I do that on the uh, uh, well preferably a 36 grit wheel I think this is a 60 can't quite remember now it's my coarse uh, carborundum wheel anyway and that's literally just holding the tool flat on the rest and getting at it Okay, and so on. I'm not going to run the whole thing, do it now. You get the idea until you get it to a point. Now, the next thing to do is to um, shape the ends. Now, how you're going to, what you're going to do with this um, depends on how you're going to use it. Now, my uh, present half-inch spindle gouge, which I'll just fetch, is getting fairly short and uh, I'm going to put an asymmetric grind on it uh, which is typically what I use and it's also going to have a 45 degree bevel on the nose so th the first thing is to set the bevel uh, I want it just a little bit longer than that that happens over on this wheel Now that's not cutting as well as it should, so get a wheel dresser at it. So here's what it looks like at this stage. I'm going to keep the right wing pretty much as it is and lengthen the other side. That's looking pretty good. This grinder takes five and a half minutes to slow down, so I have a small stick to bring it to a halt uh, just a little bit faster. Right, so that tool is now ready to go into a handle. Now I have an old handle which was for another one of these and so that can just go straight into there I hope and then um, this gets hit on the other end we'll just whack that in and we've got that in there get the hammer and basically whack that in Counterintuitive, but it works. So 
Right, so that doesn't want to go in any further, so I'd imagine that, and I forgot to measure how far it's in, but that feels good. Now, got a bit more leverage here, and I can now grind this, and I do all my grinding freehand. Um, friend in America did develop a jig for this but uh, nobody was interested in manufacturing it so uh, still if you want the asymmetric grind you're going to be doing it by hand now this is a bit of old 150 uh, 180 grit and that just takes a little bit of bluing off the steel which isn't a big deal with high speed steel um, and then the idea is going to be to I have a, uh, a rest on which I can pivot. I don't really want the thing sitting flat on the, uh, on the rest. And hold it on the rest. I generally start in the middle. Round to the right and then come back around to the left. and push it up the wheel. Up the wheel rather than around because one it's awkward to have my hands there and two it tends to flatten the side and on the left wing I want nice full curve there. It takes a fatter shaving. I find it's a bit more efficient as a cutting tool. And that's it. Now there is another video uh, on sharpening uh, this gouge, so or how to sharpen a, a spindle gouge. Uh, so I'd recommend you to that. Then to cope with the um, uh, with shaping the the deep fluted bowl gouge, um, that again I want a longer bevel on the nose but I want to keep the right wing fairly steep and I'm going to bring back the left wing so again I go over to the coarser wheel for that. Now I can develop the basic fingernail grind with the tool flat and the rest just turn it around. Always looks like tool abuse at this occasion, at this stage. Yeah. out the inside the advantage of abrasive is it just fits right into the curve
again I'm looking for a fairly full curve on the left wing I don't want it too long and straight because uh, I find that might be fine for sheer scraping but it's extremely aggressive and uh, probably more than uh, you need when you're making roughing cuts um, if I do use this on the outside of a bowl uh, well, I generally rough down with spindle or shape bowls with spindle gouges um, on the outside I want a full curve on the wing full convex curve because it takes a fatter shaving rather than the wider one it takes the wood off very quickly so that now needs a handle oh first I've got to finish doing the uh, the spike at the end